What's up, Hungry Muggles? It's Harry Potter week in the Starving Chef's Kitchen. Every year for the better part of... <coughs> Excuse me. Every year for the better part of a decade, I have transfigured my kitchen into the halls of Hogwarts to explore the magical treats and feasts found throughout the wizarding world. This year, I've been focusing specifically on recipes created within the very halls of Hogwarts. So, if you want to check out more Harry Potter-inspired recipes like this one, head on over to thestarvingchefblog.com for magical recipes and fictional feasts. And don't forget to hit that sub button for even more delicious recipes. Now let's apparate back to the wizarding world to see what they are serving up in the Hogwarts kitchens. Food and feasts at Hogwarts are featured heavily throughout the books and movies. But what isn't mentioned in the movies is that the feasts are actually being prepared by the house elves. Yes, even Dobby the free elf worked in the kitchens at Hogwarts for a small fee. In fact, Hermione spends a significant amount of time creating SPEW and trying to get the house elves in the kitchen a living wage, which they actually found somewhat annoying and rather insulting. This recipe is inspired by the meals that the house elves would prepare on an average winter evening at Hogwarts. After a long day of classes and Quidditch lessons, nothing would warm you from the inside better than a house elf made beef and dumpling stew. Now I've taken this recipe from the house elves directly and made it muggle friendly with just a few magical steps. First, we'll need to heat up our Dutch oven and Accio olive oil to prepare the pot for searing the beef. Once the oil is hot, we will add our beef to the pot and start searing it on all sides. We aren't looking to cook the beef completely through, just give it a nice sear. Then I'll go ahead and give it a quick hit of salt and pepper, the real magic ingredients when it comes to making something taste delicious. Once the beef is browned up, we can take the beef out of the pot and set it aside. Leave the leftover oils in the bottom of the pot because we'll be using the juices to brown our potatoes, carrots, and celery. And oops, almost forgot our most important aromatic, the onion. Saute the veggies for a few minutes. When the celery has started to brighten up in color, you'll know that it's time to add the minced garlic. Don't add it too early or else it may start to burn. Accio garlic. After we give the veggies a few more minutes of sauteing, I can add in the flour. This will sort of create a roux-like base for the soup and help it thicken up as it cooks. And then give it a good stir to make sure all the veggies are nice and coated up. This stew actually uses three different types of broth. One might say it's the Deathly Hallows of stews. We have a chicken broth, a beef broth, and a garlic broth. All of these started with a broth base, but if you can't find garlic broth, extra beef broth or even vegetable broth will work in a pinch. Then we'll bring our cauldron, I mean soup pot, to a rolling bubble. Let's speed this up a bit. Relatio, that's better. While the stew simmers, let's go prep our dumplings. We'll start with a cup of flour and then Accio salt. And Accio baking powder, all for flavor and rise. Then Professor Sprout was kind enough to bring us fresh and dried herbs from the greenhouses. Accio herbs. We have a mix of fresh parsley and sage and dried thyme and marjoram. Accio herbs. Then we'll give it a quick mixy mix. In a separate bowl, we will then combine fresh milk and an egg, and then give it a good whisking. Then we can take our chilled butter and give it a quick chop. A quick chop, there we are. And then to connect with our muggle roots, we will actually have to manually break up the butter into the flour mixture until it is all nice and crumbly. 
When the mixture is more or less uniformly crumbled up, we can pour in the wet ingredients. We want to mix up the dough until a sticky batter has formed. If it's too sticky, add a tiny bit more flour until you can grab at the dough without it sticking like crazy to your fingers. Then let it rest for a few minutes while we head back to the cauldron, I mean soup pot. By now, our stew is beautifully bubbling, so we can return the seared ribeye to the pot and mix it all together. I like to make sure that all of the beef is below the surface of the broth so it finishes cooking evenly. The longer it stews, the more tender it will get. Once we have the stew back to a rolling bubble, we can start adding in the dumplings. There's a bit of a technique to it. If the dough is made correctly, it should minimally stick to your fingers and you should be able to twist off golf sized portions of the dough and start adding the dough balls directly to the stew. I like to press them down about halfway so that the bottom is nice and soft like a dumpling, but the top is more like a biscuit. In order to achieve this, We'll go ahead and cover and let the stew boil for another 10 minutes if you're a muggle, but if you have a magical soup pot like I do, the effect is nearly instant. The house elves at Hogwarts certainly outdo themselves with every meal. The dumplings in this dish certainly stand out from other dumplings. Flecked with fresh herbs and chunks of melty butter, you'll have a hard time finding a muggle who can make them better. As the stew simmers, the potatoes become incredibly tender and pair beautifully with the now sweet flavors of carrot and onion. The ribeye will get more tender the longer it cooks, bringing the entire stew together in one magical bite. If you aren't careful, you might accidentally make a love potion, <laughs> I mean stew, and have a few muggles fall in love with you. If you want measurements and step-by-step -step instructions to this recipe, head on over to the Starving Chef blog, where you can find this recipe and many others with step-by-step -step instructions. And if you like this video, don't forget to flip that sub button and ring the dinner bell so you can keep up with the latest recipes and foodie adventures that I post almost every week. What Harry Potter inspired recipes would you like to see in the future? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm trying to expand my repertoire of magical recipes. So if there's more Harry Potter themed content or even other movies, books, games, TV shows, any other magical or fictional food that you would like to see me make, leave a comment down below and let me know what recipes you're most interested in seeing come to life. I have a ton of other Harry Potter inspired recipes over on my website and lots of just recipes in general. So head on over to thestarvingchefblog.com for even more delicious content. I hope you all enjoyed and mischief managed.